And with that, we bring on the general manager, the boss, Mr. Dorsey, John Dorsey, joining us here on the program. Uh, sir, there were there have been myriad reports of people in the streets, and the police were actually called because of the things that you've done in the last week. So I will just say from the collective fan base, sir, thank you uh, for what's happened in this roster. In all seriousness, I don't know that we've seen anything in, in since you've been on here from a talent acquisition standpoint of what you've done. I'll say it. I know you don't like to, to, to say it, but it's just been incredible, and we thank you. No, you, you know what? It all starts at the top. It all starts back with the leadership of Jimmy and D Haslam uh, to allowing us to have the assets to do this. Um, and it starts with the, the personnel staff and the coaching staff. I mean, we've, we've researched and planned go all the way back to mid-December, and through everybody's hard works, um, you're seeing the end results of hard work, and we stuck to, to the plan. Um, some of it happened, some of it didn't, but at the end of the day, I think we're a better football team today than we were yesterday, and that's all you can ask for. So – when we spoke at the Combine, I asked you about you know, having the 10 picks, and you said, I want to have 10 picks every year. And I said, why? And you said, options. Well, clearly you've already exercised some of your options in this year's draft capital to bring in a megastar in Odell Beckham Jr. Just a kind of, you know, how did that come to be, and when did you know this was something that could really happen? Well, I mean, you know, Odell's a good football player, and we've always said that we're going to try to acquire as good, good football players, as many as we possibly can. Uh, the actual, you know, we we plan for a lot of different scenarios on a lot of different situations, and usually 99% of these things that you plan for don't pan out. But this happened to be one of those 1% that actually, you know, came to reality. And really, you didn't think that it was going to. I didn't realize it was going to unfold until late afternoon, early evening, and then uh, after we got, off, I had gotten off the phone with uh, David Gettleman. I looked at the boys and I go, boys, this this is, we may be able to make this work. <laughs> and sure yeah. enough, and then you did, in fact, make it work. So I have to ask you, I'm sure you've seen videos of fans. We did an emergency podcast. People said it sounded like, you know, kids on Christmas morning. We were so happy. How do you, so you hang up the phone, it's done. You do what? Do you even have a celebration? Is there a full door celebration to a move like this? No. We no. Have, I mean, no. Business. It's, it's time just to business. go on to the next project. It's just business. But you know what, though? You know, when, when you can begin to build a team like this, you know what? You know who deserves it more than anybody? The fan base. Yep. The fan base of what they've had to endure for, for a while. I mean, and, and that's what we do is, you know, what we're trying to do is we're trying to be relevant again. And... You know, right now we're going to be competitive in in the in the AFC North. But guess what, guys? We haven't done anything yet. Yeah. Okay, you got to earn your stripes in the fall. Okay, that's where it all starts in the fall. And you got to have the right mindset. Players got to have the right mindset. And what I'm excited about is bring the guys when they come to OTAs, and we'll have some energy in the building. John, I, it, what's interesting is is all the guys that we've heard from, and Sheldon Richardson top among that, um, is as soon as we – because we get excited. That's what we do, right? That's what we do here on the program. <laughs> we get excited. We wear your sweatshirts. and Nathan we never gets excited. <laughs> no, right, never. Very calm. Never. Even no, keel. No, always even yeah. keel. Uh, but one thing they always, they're all quick to say is, hey, we ain't done nothing. Like, we got business to do here. We, we came – Sheldon Richardson, I came here to play in playoff games. I came in here to win. That's the deal. That's why I came here. The base is being built, the foundation. You like to build projects. It's a really big project. You are handing over this eventually to Freddie Kitchens. And I think all of that is the way that this has worked. It's, it's you landed on Baker. You landed on Freddie. And all of this – all of this is – it's the same attitude. And the other thing about it, John, they're, all of these guys are in their 20s, the young 20s, early to mid-20s. No, no, it is. And, you know – it all starts down in the locker room, but who are the Cleveland Browns but the men within that locker room? Those are the guys that are going to set the standards and the bars and how much they want to achieve. And, and what you do is you go about that task on a daily basis. Now, that, you know, Freddie's going to preach the message to them, you know, day in and day out, and, and he's going to earn their, their respect and their trust because, you know, the one thing you love about Freddie, he's very direct, he's very honest, he's going to hold guys accountable. But he likes football, too. And guys like him. And, and guys feed off of that. And they'll feed off themselves as well. You said, uh, upon being hired, time to wake the sleeping giant. And uh, we had Sheldon in here today. And um, one thing that I know about you is your great appreciation of the history of this league. And Sheldon said today that he, was, he got to meet Jim Brown. 
And he said that that meant more to me than putting my name on the contract. Like I, he's a hero of mine. Like the ability the ability to meet Jim Brown. I think that history weaving in with these young guys. It's kind of all coming together. I had gotten a text from uh, Jim this morning. Uh, we talk on a periodic basis. And, you know, my first story about Jim Brown when I got here. I walked up to him. I go, uh, Mr. Brown, sir. <laughs> you know, I'm the GM of the uh, Cleveland Browns. By chance, can I have my picture taken with you, sir? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, my God, that's Jim that's Brown. Right. <laughs> but no. Um, and he said, absolutely. Because what I wanted to do is I want these guys to understand what it means to be a Cleveland Brown from his mouth. Mm -hmm. That's To me, that resonates a lot. And so Jim and Sheldon, they sat there for, you know, 10 minutes and talked. And it was awesome. You could just see how – I mean, he was, yeah. he almost had a tear in his eyes. He was he talking was to Jim us. Brown. I remember at the Combine, you told me you'd spoken with some of the alumni and, and their excitement about the team really excited you. Has anybody reached out to you that really has kind of resonated with you following all of these moves? Because, I mean, to be honest, the Browns have been the number one news story in the country and, in, frankly, the front page of the BBC, so maybe even yeah. the world <laughs> in this past week. No, I think it's important when you have guys, alumni guys, reach out to you. You know what? Those are the guys that basically create the history of this team. Yeah. And so it's meaningful when those guys can, you know, text you or call you up and, and say, you know what? You're doing a good job. Just keep it up. And that means something to me because, because a man told me a long time ago, you know, respect those guys that make, make this game great because they built the foundation of where we are today in the National Football League. There's no question this franchise has such a storied history and, as you said, awaken that sleeping giant. I want to ask you about some of the guys that have been brought in, introduced today, Sheldon Richardson, Demetrius Harris, and I want to focus on Demetrius because his story, his telling of the story of how you it's discovered crazy. him was amazing, and he said, I have so much loyalty to John Dorsey. He basically said as soon as free agency opened, he said, I knew I, was gonna, I wanted to be a Cleveland Brown, and I wanted to get back with John Dorsey. So how did you discover this basketball player in Wisconsin? Actually, you know, we were down at uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, and we were at the Peabody Hotel. We were sitting in the lobby, and it was myself, Ted Thompson, and I think John Schneider was there too. And we were at an all-star game. It was the Texas versus the Nation all-star game back then, and we were just sitting there after practice. And we just had conversation, and those guys left. And next thing you know, um, I, there, was a, there was a gentleman who, who I was started talking to, and we started talking, and he goes – you know, this is when I was in. Uh, this is when I was in Green Bay, right. by the way. And then he goes, you know, there's a there's a player that plays basketball at the University of Wisconsin Milwaukee. You know, he was an all state. He was an all state wide receiver, and he could have gone anywhere in the SEC to play uh, to play football. So I said, what's his name? And he goes, it's, it's Demetrius Harris. So I wrote it down on my Franklin planner, and two years later, it popped up on the right date of the Franklin planner. It pops it up, and then. I went and, um, and now I was with Kansas City, and so I sent a scout out there to work him out because I knew he was a mid-major basketball guy. So then you send the scout there to work him out, and the guy's 6'5". He's about 250. He's running 4'5", 3", 4'5", 4". I mean, he was – and I'm just going, okay, boys, we're going to sign this one as a college free agent. <laughs> and so what you did is you just we, – we signed him, and you basically gave him a red shirt year and just let him – put him on the practice squad, let him develop for a year and he's what he's done is phenomenal because he's gone from a basketball player to where he is today and he's I mean he's a professional football player now and that's the you know that's a credit to him a great personality and what do you see him bringing this team on the field um I see I see a a, a really quality number two um two tight end I see a guy who can catch the ball can block so he can do all things but uh, what we've always said as as a tight end position, he may be one of the top three tight ends, special teams player in the National Football League. So he brings that that core presence about. He's uh, he understands what it means to be a professional, and he's going to come in here and work his fanny off. Options, options, versatility. Uh, you mentioned uh, Darius Taylor, great special teams player as right. well. And then, and we had Eric Cushion here, who's just that guy's <laughs> full of life. That guy, he loves you too. You drafted him in Kansas City as well. Cushy, no, with uh, with Cushy, Cushy is a, uh, you know, he's a center guard guy. You know, um, he loves James Campen. He, he he was in my office, you know, fifteen minutes ago. He goes, I love James Campen. Mm -hmm. He's going to be awesome, which is good. He give, he can play center. He can play guard. 
Um, and he's going to compete. Now, he's such a proud person. He's going to compete. There's nothing given here. He's competing for the right guard spot. So yeah. let's let the best man win. And he's a very competitive man as well. Competition everywhere. I mean, I think about what camp – we're a long ways from that. And I know you have more projects, but I just think about the competition that you've set up across the roster. It's just going to be fierce. Well, you, you have to do that. Any uh, – because – Football is such a demanding and competitive game, and you always want to push each other to be really good. That's what the really good teams do. They push each other, offense, defense, same position. Like you talk a positional competition. You know, I, I heard Les Miles talk about Odell Beckham and Jarvis Landry. They would compete against each other in practice. Who could do this? Who could do this? Who could run the best routes? Who could go down and block the best? That's pretty cool. Yeah. And, you know, I'd like to see some of that out here in training camp myself. So that's what I'm excited about. I have a feeling you are going to see a <laughs> whole see lot that. of that in training camp. You talk about at the Combine, you mentioned to me, we asked about the defensive front, and you said, I want four pass rushers on my defensive line. That's, what I'm, that's my goal, to get after the quarterback. Well, now you have Miles. You brought in Olivier Vernon, signed Sheldon Richardson. We know we have Larry Ogunjobi, not to mention the depth behind those guys. Uh, how happy are you with the, the moves and the acquisitions you were able to make along that defensive front? And I know you're a man who's never satisfied, but how do you feel about that group right now? Well, I like the, you know, you're never satisfied, but it looks good on paper. You know what I mean? But now you've got to go execute, and yeah. you've got to stay true to it. Um, Any time that you can apply pressure on a quarterback is a good thing. And now you have guys coming off edges. Then you've got guys who can actually pass rush in the middle Quarterback sometimes has nowhere to run, but sometimes up the middle, or he's getting sacked. So hopefully the application of pressure is a constant uh, this fall. 